Welcome back to part two of my interview with Holly Clark of Hold My Seam Ripper and Holly Clark Designs. Please enjoy. I'm Amanda and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Hey there, Not Your Granny's Quilt Show podcast fans. I am looking for new guests. So if you are interested in chatting with me on the show, please email us. We'll put that down below and let us know what you want to share with us on the show. And we will get in contact with you and get you on. I can't wait to chat with you. And hopefully we get some really great episodes. Thanks. Yeah. I think that's important to it as self-employed as well. Like we get to take time for ourselves. And I think there's all this pressure to like, you have to always be on, always be responding, always be available. And I'm like, as learning from being a teacher, I have to set time boundaries for myself or I will lose my mind. And so, and I, it's okay. Like if people really want to talk to you or they really want to collaborate with you or whatever, like they can wait. And if it, if they can't wait, then maybe it's not going to work out and that's okay. And maybe it shouldn't, you know, it's like, right. Yeah. And we put all this pressure on ourselves. It's not Mm -hmm. like, like if you emailed somebody and they didn't respond immediately, you're not going to like, like, (laughs) like go somewhere else you're gonna wait and then maybe like a week later you might be like oh yeah Um, that sounds familiar (laughs) (laughs) but but like you're not just gonna like disappear because someone didn't respond immediately like that's crazy that's not how life works so I've kind of gotten given myself a little more grace to like take a while to respond if I need it and it I mean it's nothing like life or death here so (laughs) It, it'll be fine <laughs> yeah exactly and I think that's that's definitely like a, a stress saver is like remembering like I this is my business you know yeah. all my mind mine and my mom's and and we can we we've got to run it how it's going to work for our lives and because we don't have any other employees we don't have you know anybody else quilting for us or working for us like we just have to be able to put up those boundaries and say, you know what, I need some time, or, you know what, I need to focus on, you know, just quilting today. I can't be answering Etsy messages or I can't be checking emails constantly because I need to be focused on getting these quilts done. And yeah, yeah. I think it's really easy to get sucked into thinking you need to be responding constantly. And yeah. And so, and just being able to turn off email or turn off whatever um yeah whatever venue people are trying to get hold of you you can turn it off like sometimes we think we can't but you definitely can and nobody's going to like disappear on you just because you didn't answer in a day like you know it's yeah that's just that's life (laughs) yeah exactly yeah and it's just a good reminder out there for everybody, you know, like, yeah, don't put undue pressure on yourself to be something that nobody's necessarily expecting of you. And yeah, you can can lay off on the pressure. Like it's going to be fine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Don't get lazy, but (laughs) it's a balance. (laughs) It's a balance. Yeah, for sure. And, and, um, like being self-employed too, like it has, um, you, you have that flexibility to, you know, work when you want and yeah. turn it off when you want, you know, take care of the kids or go to a doctor's appointment. Or like, if you just need to go and plan your garden for a bit in the summer, because you just need to get away. Like, yeah, there's so many like good, flexible parts of it. And right. nobody needs to know that you're in your garden during the day. If right. You need to do that. You need to do that. And right. Um, right. Yeah, just making sure you have that balance and trying to juggle it all without like all this undue pressure and Mm -hmm. and like yeah, keeping keeping life um, that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. like easy to burn out. It's super easy to burn out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially you know, it's like you hear um like opposing messages of like, oh, turn your hobby into a business or don't turn your hobby into a business because you'll end up hating it. And I think 
yeah, if you don't set boundaries for yourself and you say yes to everything, you will end up hating it. But if you keep those boundaries and you keep, keep as much pressure out of it as you can, you can still keep your hobby as your business and still love it for yourself on the, on the other side of it. And so I think finding that is really important too, to, if you do turn your hobby into a business, like we have, (laughs) it's an important balance to find. Yeah. And like tuning out those messages of like, you have to do this or you can't do this or whatever, like do what works for you. Like, you know, don't tell me what to do. (laughs) I'm going to do it my way. (laughs) I do what I want. (laughs) I'm going to make my mistakes and I'm going to learn from them and I'm going to move on and figure out what works and saying no to things that are not doing you any favors and you're just putting extra pressure on yourself and Mm -hmm. that's one thing I like I wish I had learned earlier was being able to say no to work that I didn't necessarily want to do yeah and um like especially in my graphic design business like Mm -hmm. when I started out I didn't say no to anything because you never know what's going to come through the door right right and being able to I mean you learn a lot from doing things you hate yeah <laughs> so there's sure. that it's like but, oh, for again <laughs> yeah. but um but now I'm like way more picky and choosy of what I say yes to because why if I would I want to spend my time doing something that isn't gonna benefit me in in the way that it's gonna benefit yeah. you, right so right like it's got to serve you too. It can't just yeah. only serve the client. And yeah. that was something I had to learn pretty quick, like, because I did not know how crazy popular our custom quilt option would be through Etsy. Like I, we have, you know, some fabrics up there and we get minky remnants from Shannon fabrics. Cause we're a Shannon fabric rep. And like, um, so we'll sell those through, through that. And we've got some, you know, quilts that we've made from just different fabrics we've had laying around or that we've just wanted to use and that like nothing was really selling like we've sold quite a bit of minky but um I was like man I'm like I wonder and my I have a friend who she makes like um those like lanyards with those silicone beads and she'll customize them and so I had a bunch for when I was teaching and um she makes keychains and stuff too and I was like, oh, she does it. So then I was like, how do I set up this custom order? And so she was kind of explaining how she did it. I was like, awesome. So it's kind of nice to like have connections of people who've already kind of paved the way for that. And then, right. you know, just put our own parameters on it, obviously. But it's been, that's like been the bulk of our business. Like we still long arm for our local clients and we'll long arm for anybody if they're willing to send us their quilts. But um, it's it's been so crazy. And just the sheer volume of requests we get weekly that I just was like frantic and I was trying to accept everything and we were underpricing like not intentionally but just like underpricing at first and so then when I would like try to make the invoice I was like we're missing so much money because we're not even paying ourselves for our actual labor hours or you know just like certain things and so yeah I had to learn that so fast because (laughs) I, we were swimming in it for a few right. months and then yeah and if you're in demand you can start to increase those prices so that you can turn away some did do you ever turn away anything custom or um I would done had to turn away a couple just because it's like what they were asking is not in my wheelhouse and it's not something I'm going to take hours and hours to figure out right yeah for that person when it I can't see ever using that skill anywhere else in my life or like again. So yeah. Yeah. Um, or just like we're super busy. So somebody's like, hey, can you make me a quilt and send it to me within two weeks? I'm like, no. (laughs) No, I cannot. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) So, you know, just things like that. It's like, I need this for Mother's Day. I'm like, well, Mother's Day is in six days and that (laughs) isn't gonna work. Like right. So And I think that just comes with people not really realizing how long quilting or making a quilt can take. And, you know, like once we get everything collected and we have a pattern and we know what we're doing, like we can bust one out in a couple of days, but it's just having to like fit it in the schedule with everything else we have going on. And like, yeah, you're not going to drop everything that's already on the go for something that 
they've given you very little time. Yeah. Right. That's no. not how it works. Yeah, exactly. So I've gotten pretty good at just being like, well, if you want this, this is how much it's going to cost. And this is the time frame. And if they say, if they don't respond or that doesn't work for them, I'm like, okay, well, hopefully we can work together in the future or, you know, just, yeah. I hope you find what you're looking for kind of sentiment. Cause I really truly do, but I just can't be the one to give it to you, you know? So, right. and sometimes they just don't know. So, right. you know, they'll plan better in the future, maybe come back knowing that, <laughs> what to expect. So, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to turn anyone away, but it's right. Not I don't, work. It's not work. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't want to tell you no, but also I need to tell you no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but it's been, it's been a good learning curve. And I think as a person who struggles with, with some boundaries, like <laughs> it's like been mostly. a good practice. Yeah. 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 It's been a good practice of just like really preserving, like if my, my name my mom's name, our business name is going to be attached to this thing that I want to know I can deliver the best product I can deliver. Right. If I'm questioning it, or I don't think we can accomplish it how you want it, then I'm going to be honest about that. And I'm not going to try to yank you around just because I think you're going to be a, one of my clients. Like I try to really assess the job through conversation before I even agree to anything because I think, and setting the expectation of like, this is what I need from you. If I'm going to do this thing, then this is what I need from you. And yes. this is what you'll get from me. Yeah. And that seems to work really well. And, you know, there's people that ask and then I never hear from them again, which is totally fine. I get it. But, and then there's people that ask and they're like, okay, I'm going to start saving up my money mm -hmm. because I really want to have this quilt made for myself or for so-and-so. And, but I, I know it's worth it. So I'm going to save the money and I'll contact you when I'm ready. Perfect. Yeah. I'll be here. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. That okay. just that honesty about the process. And I think it's easy to be like, oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. It's totally fine. And then be frantic behind the scenes. Like, right. <laughs> I don't want to live that life. I, I quit teaching for a reason. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I can help your kid with that and be like, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's so, not enough hours in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's been an important piece of, you know, niching into our business and what, what we can and can't deliver. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good to, good to know your boundaries and your, uh, what you're capable of and what you even want to do. And like you said, with, with, if there's a project that you'd have to spend a whole bunch of time learning new skills that you'll never use again, then you're probably not the right fit and being right. able to tell them you're going to have to find someone else. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to yeah. do that sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And just doing it in the kindest way possible. Cause I'm not ever trying to like hurt anyone or, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't no. think, I don't think anybody really is necessarily intentionally trying to hurt anyone's feelings by turning them away or saying, I can't make that for you. Yeah. No, you just got to do what you got, what you can and yeah. Yeah. Turn away what you can. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. And you know, hopefully they will find someone with those skills or that's willing to, to work with them. And, and that, that will be a, a cool relationship for them, but it's just yeah. not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and it sounds like you, you know, with your graphic design and stuff, you're, you're pretty comfortable with turning stuff away that you don't want to do, or that doesn't. I am you. now. Yeah. It, it was, a it was hard to learn that, mm -hmm. but, um, but I am more, much more comfortable now to just, um, know when it's going to be a good fit and when it's going to just drive me crazy and not be worth the time because, like, like with anything, there's a lot of, a lot of clients that don't know what to expect and they don't know mm -hmm. like how much time things take or how much it's going to cost. And mm -hmm. they just, I need a logo like, okay, but that's a process, right? It's not just, I don't have them like in my back pocket. <laughs> like I, hand out. I have to come up with it. Like, like, yeah. And we need to like, there's a lot that I need from you to find out like what, 
do you need? You know, what does your logo need to be? You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so sometimes um, I can tell <laughs> from an email if that process is going to go well or not. And mm -hmm or from a conversation and just, I know sometimes I need to just say, I'm not the one for you on this project. <laughs> but um, but yeah, then, yeah. you know, certainly there's other bigger opportunities that I can't turn down and they turn out to be great. So yeah, yeah just finding that sweet spot of, of what's gonna work and mm -hmm. not. And I think it's, I'm sure it's the same for you. Like I don't do custom quilts. I don't sell my quilts, mm -hmm. but I think like, from the design graphic design point of view to the custom quilt making um, business, like yeah. it's a lot of those same things. It's like just evaluating whether it's going to be a good fit mm -hmm. and yeah. knowing where where you want to take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that like goal and vision of where you're trying to take yourself and your business is really important. And yeah, you know, I have some pretty lofty goals in my head, but. I don't know that like as a business that we're there yet, but I definitely have things I'm striving towards. So I think that helps also help me think through and like narrow down what I say yes and no to. Like, yeah. is this going to serve my larger goal? Is this going to serve my right now goal? Is it going to serve my, you know, year from now goal? And just kind of think through that, like, and yeah, making, building my skills by making tons of quilts is really helpful to me. And I'm learning so much in the past, you know, just, it's literally been a year since I stopped teaching, you know, since the end of last school year and, oh. and that I've been full time in, in the business with my mom. Like, oh, I've been I didn't know that. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I was helping during my breaks from school. Cause, um, I was teaching in a charter school that we had we had a different kind of break schedule from other schools. And so I would have a week off like every six to seven weeks with the normal like holiday breaks and stuff. But um, so then I would just like go work during my breaks and, and help my mom. And, and we weren't making as many custom quilts then we were just long arming, but, yeah. um, and you know, she does some like alterations and that kind of thing too, kind of more quietly on the side, but she's, mm -hmm good at them so she can whip them out pretty quick but anyway um so yeah then it was just finally like I was not happy I was not feeling like I was in the place I needed to be and so I was like well I'm gonna give the business my full effort for yeah. now yeah. and see what happens and it's been really good and fun and you know we definitely have gotten busier because I can I can put effort into things that my mom didn't necessarily have time to put effort into and Right. As far as like getting more clients and expanding our, our reach by opening our Etsy shop and all that stuff. So. Great. Well, podcast. you probably have skills that your mom doesn't have and she has skills that you don't have. And so you both bring that to yeah. the business and, and yeah. soon build the business because you can do more, right. With the yeah. two of you. And yeah, that's really good. Yeah. And we both have high expectations of ourselves. Like, I think we're pretty well managed in that, but it's like, we know when something isn't right and we're not going to send it out the door if it looks like that kind of thing. And, and so I think that's good because we have pretty similar vision of what, or idea of what our brand quality should be. And, and if my name is on that, it's going to look really good. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. I don't want clients to ever be disappointed. And right. obviously you can't avoid it all the time, but 99% of the time it's perfectly fine and, yeah, and yeah. it works out. But. Well, and you want those customers to be happy and potentially um, either come back or tell a friend or, yeah. um, you know, refer other business to you. So that like, why would you ever not want them to be 100% happy, right? So, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and I think that's the fun, that's fun too, is like, once you find, we, you know, get working with a client and we start the process and it's like, okay, I'm going to take, we're going to shop for fabric. So I'll let them know how to time. And then I send them pictures of the fabrics I'm thinking for their quilt, unless, because sometimes they'll send us fabrics that they want. And sometimes we just have to go get them. And 
that's super fun because we get to go fabric shopping all the time <laughs> um, and spend other people's money. <laughs> well, it's also fun to have like a specific purpose when you're fabric shopping too, as opposed yeah. to just like, because you can just wander and like, I need this and I need this and mm -hmm. you don't have a plan for it. But when you have a purpose, it's like you're more focused and yeah. you have a like mission. <laughs> a mission. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. So that's it, fun. I mean, it's, it's fun both ways, but it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's more fun when you're focused. <laughs> yeah. And I think just kind of, you know, through pictures, taking them along with me and, and keeping them involved in the process and sending progress pictures. And I try to be really involved with every client so that they know that I care. Like I, I'm right. not just here to like whip something out and pay for it. And then you just have to deal with it. Like, I want you to be involved in, in the process so that you can see like, am I interpreting this correctly? Am I bringing this to life how you want to see it brought to life? And, and there's times when it's like, maybe I misunderstood something, but then it ends up being okay. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. But, you know, nothing has been so catastrophic that we completely failed a person, you know? Right. And right. even when we've made mistakes, because we have, it's just, we're like, okay, we'll fix it, you know? Right. And I think that willingness to accept responsibility for that, I think can make a big difference in, in a business as well. Like if they try to put all the responsibility on you for a mistake that you probably are the one who made, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. if I quilted it wrong, then I'll fix it, you know, or right. if it wasn't to your expectations, then I will sit and I will rip out every single stitch of that long arming and I will make it right. Oh, you know? wow. oh my goodness. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you, you probably, you probably are able because you've done so many quilts and you know what's going to work and what isn't, you can probably give them some insight from the beginning too of mm -hmm. like, um, you know, that sounds great, but have yeah. you thought about maybe we could do this instead and mm -hmm. probably push the idea a little bit further and make a better product in the end? Yeah. I know I have yeah. to do that a lot too. And because <clears throat> you have to be the expert, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what they're paying you for too, right? That is your expertise mm -hmm. and to have the input that, um, that you bring to the table because they certainly might have a vision, but they might like, they've only thought about this when there's like these other opportunities or other mm -hmm. possibilities out there. And so you, you can bring that to them and they'll be like, oh, this is way better than I ever imagined. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's fun too, is the back and forth of like trying to like nail down details and like help, help them understand, like, this is what you're asking me. Is that what you mean? <laughs> you know, right. Like exactly. that, what you said is this, but I don't think you know what that means right. <laughs> or, you know, or they know exactly what they want. And they're like, I want this pattern and I want it in the fabrics that are on that quilt in the picture. And I want the quilting just like that. It's like, okay, that's easy, you know? Right, yeah, it, like it, when they know, they know, um, mm -hmm. and then you can just give it to them. But right. when they're like, I, you know, I think I want this or, yeah, or if they're asking for something that you know is gonna like clash or mm -hmm. it's not gonna quilt well or whatever, like, yeah, you can be like, yeah. No. <laughs> like, that's not gonna work. I have a better idea, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And thankfully, you know, the, I think, you know, people know that they don't know, they're not the expert. And so, and that's fine. Like, I'm not asking you to come to me as an expert quilter because that's, you're coming to me because that's my job. And so, right. like, I'm here to help educate you so that you know what you're asking for. And so that you know what you're, you know, exactly like what you want and how it can be, you know, created and and but also let them know like yeah your vision can be brought to life and I think yeah, yeah. I think that's the the most fun part is them getting to see like the thing that they've been envisioning is like a thing now it's really out here it's material right. you can touch it it's tangible and yeah and I think that's just the most fun part is being like it's done it's on its way to you and just the excitement <laughs> when they receive it and I yeah. love when they send us like pictures of you know, when they finally get it and it's in its place where it's supposed to be. And it's just like, oh, it's home, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so. you see it being used and loved and yeah. That. Yeah. 
Is it like, I could imagine it's the same with like your design, your graphic designs, like seeing people using their logos and stuff that you make, like. Yeah, yeah. And because logos tend to be used for a long time, right? So even if a client has kind of come and gone from me, they don't need anything more from me, but then I'll be driving around and be like, hey, there's that logo I designed. It's on a billboard or whatever. And it's sort yeah. of like, it's like got legs and it's going to be around for a long time and it represents this whole company, you know? Right. Like, so that's really exciting. Yeah. That's um, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you see it on a sign, like, you know, signs cost so much to build and install and all that. And it's like, that logo is going nowhere. Like it's yeah. there forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Cause once you make it that permanent, you're like, all right, hope you love it. Cause it's <laughs> not going anywhere for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like websites can come and go, but like signage is, um, it's a big investment, <laughs> Yeah, especially sure. like on a building. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, with anything, you know, like even just getting, um, like if I design a magazine or something and, um, or even like a brochure or whatever, and I actually see the printed finished piece, which I don't always get to see the finished printed piece. But when I do, I'm like, I, I did this, like, yeah. I, you know, and it's kind of, it's, you know, and brochures and postcards don't have the, uh, the lifespan of a sign or whatever, but, you know, it's still nice to have that tangible thing. Like, just yeah. like with a quilt, like you actually get to kind of touch it and, you know, turn it around and feel it and smell the paper and mm -hmm. all those things. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's satisfying. That's so cool. that. And, and with my baby clothing company too, like, mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes my customers will send me pictures of their oh. babies in their little dresses or wrapped up in a blanket or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's being loved and used yeah. and even, you know, for a short time because they're going to grow out of them soon. But it's yeah. nice to have that uh, seeing that it's being used and loved. And yeah. And there's memories being made, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the fun thing too, is like, we've made a lot of like quilts with people's like their the baby clothes that they kept for their kid and like so then you're seeing this kids like outfits from like newborn to you know two years old or whatever and so getting to then further you know immortalize those those memories for those people and yeah yeah it's now it's something usable and that can it's not just like a bunch of little outfits packed away in a cedar chest it's like it's out it's gonna get loved and yeah yeah and used and you can keep looking at I mean even my little siblings like I'm so much older than my youngest siblings and so <laughs> you know even their outfits that they had when they were tiny I still like I feel kind of like a parental sense of nostalgia with them of like oh remember oh. when they wore this and <laughs> my mom's like yeah <laughs> So, yeah, for for um, me, like my friends, I was sort of the first one of my group of friends to have kids. And so hmm. we gave hand-me-downs to some of them, like from when our when our kids grew out of them. And so yeah. being able to see some of the stuff that I made for my daughter getting used by, you know, my friends, daughters and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, just the lifespan just kind of continues. And it's it's yeah. really sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's so cool and just being able to pass that stuff down and yeah you know and it's funny too because some of the some of the outfits that we've turned into you know quilts from from clients it's like oh these people use quilting cotton to make these and we're like hey we have some of this fabric oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of fun to see that and just know that it's going to be a good quality quilt because it was made with good quality fabric it's not all stretch knit you know it's right yeah 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 quilting cotton it's high quality and yeah yeah it's it's like getting put back into its original purpose <laughs> right getting a new life being what it was meant to be in the first place yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's that's kind of fun I mean it, it it's kind of heartbreaking cutting up all the clothing but yeah but we use a, as much of it as we can and and really try to make the clothing the focal point of those quilts when we do make them and right um you know when they're little when they're kid clothes we make smaller smaller blocks you know to to pull the quilts together but 
Yeah. You know, do you try to incorporate things like, um, like little bows or details that are on the clothes and that? Yeah. So we've had one client who was like, I don't want any of that. I just want the fabrics from the clothes. And I'm like, okay, okay. I guess we won't use these cute pockets and buttons. And, (laughs) but we just made two recently um, for the same person. And they wanted us to keep like the lace and the pockets and the buttons and the, you know, cute lacy fronts of, or tops of dresses and stuff. So we really, really went ham on that. And like, (laughs) they kept all the ruffly, you know, button fronts and right. kept all the fun fun parts of the different outfits and yeah oh well, that's fun so, and it you it's recognizable still as clothing and that it mm-hmm. it's not just flat fabric it's actually that it's reused yeah. from some, or repurposed from something else and right yeah it's like you can imagine that these parents have pictures of their kids in these outfits And so then there's this element of this outfit that makes it so cute, which is probably the reason why you bought it in the first place. Right. (laughs) How it gets to be on this quilt as it was. And it's just kind of like, yeah, it's like a whole new life for that, that little outfit. It was like immortalized. Yeah. A blanket and, uh, and gives a texture and like 3d element and everything to it. Oh, these are some texture equals. We, (laughs) There just were so many cute elements on them, on the clothing. There was just like all these cute trims and ribbons and just contrasting fabrics and buttons. And, you know, some of the, like the dresses were layers of like different kinds of fabric. So it was like a whole skirt of one kind of fabric, a whole separate skirt on the same dress of another kind of fabric. So it was like, we had so much to choose from too, which made it nice because we weren't like scrambling for blenders or anything like that. We were able to use so much of the clothes that we didn't really need I mean I used because my mom made one and I made the other one and I used background fabrics in mine because I made um I made a sawtooth star quilt like (laughs) the then came June pattern the offset stars oh yeah and so because I was I was in mine I was using like the shirt fronts like the collars and you know the the button fronts of dresses and stuff and so I was able to do that by making that the main, the center the block of the star. Square. Oh, mm-hmm. nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. the square of the star. And so, and then I went through and kind of hand, hand sewed buttons back on and like kept little trims of lace and that kind of thing and just added little details after. And um, and then on my mom's, she did a, the fast four patch pattern. And so she used all fabrics from the outfits and she did a different, like a, just a cotton backing, but um, we were, we even had enough fabric from the clothing to make a scrappy binding for both quilts. And so, wow, there was so much fabric. We were like, holy heck, there's like a whole yard of fabric on this dress. <laughs> yeah, just once you start. unravel a bit. <laughs> she like undid the ruffles. We were like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I don't wow. know. I think that's a fun, that's kind of a fun way to reuse. So these clothes aren't just sitting in a box not used they're you get to keep using them and loving them and having those memories be present and alive and make new memories with yeah with those that clothing still there and so yeah 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 I don't know well that's fun yeah you can be really creative with that I've only done one memory quilt and um uh there was a big learning curve there because yeah you've got to cut up um I mean you have to cut away a lot that you can't use right like right so armpit you, seams and like yeah. weird awkward shapes and things and um yeah. and it feels you feel bad cutting away a lot but yeah you also can like fussy cut the details and and keep the best parts and everything and make something new out of it so it yeah, yeah it's it, you can have really fun results with it Mm-hmm. but I also learned that I didn't enjoy making a memory quilt <laughs> so really? I was like I think that's maybe not for me but I'm glad I did it because uh it was a good experience but yeah it's a highly yeah. requested it's a highly requested you know item for us like people want that I yeah. think you know had a lot recently and you're like oh my grandma passed away or you know hey, uh, whatever it's like yeah we can do that and yeah yeah it, it's, it's sad, a great but- way 
to preserve those memories. Mm -hmm. And I think with beautiful results. So yeah. I'm glad that yeah. there are people like you who <laughs> enjoy doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I think, I don't know, it's something that like my mom is really good at just like pulling them together and figuring out how to make rows with the different sized items and mm. like she can just kind of vision it out and make it happen and so she's really good with that and so it's it's it is inspiring it's helped me definitely like branch out and think about things differently because I'm like oh I never saw it that way or right yeah, so yeah. that's also kind of fun like I think creativity can flow in isolation but it also I think needs a friend sometimes <laughs> I yeah absolutely I agree like it's it's important to like always be learning from someone else because mm -hmm. yeah you're not going to think of every way of doing something and seeing yeah. it through somebody else's eyes you're going to learn and you maybe you won't do it the, that same way but it might spark something else and yeah. we'll use that as like a point to jump off from for when you do the next piece you do and yeah 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 it's and that's why I love doing this podcast and just like just being a part of the quilty community in general it's just like there's so much information to learn out there and I think it's one of the most generous communities and people want to yeah. share their knowledge like yeah we want we want everybody to quilt we want you to learn these skills because we want you to be successful and build something that you love or that someone else is going to love and and keep moving it forward and keeping it alive and so yeah absolutely there's so much information out there if you want to learn a new technique like yeah just go on instagram and ask somebody how do i do this yeah. and you're gonna get so many answers of um either different techniques or different resources and mm -hmm. like people are so helpful and i've learned cool. so much like i um I've, uh, I'm pretty much mostly self-taught and it's mostly through either learning from Instagram or from YouTube or reading other people's blog posts. And like, there's yeah. just so much information that, like you said, people are happy to share and want to help others learn. And yeah, it's amazing. It's a great community. <laughs> yeah. It's really been amazing. And, you know, I just hope to add to that. And, and I think yeah, just that generosity, like, please don't gatekeep this, like, this can be for everybody, and, you know, it's, it should be widely shared, there's no proprietary information, <laughs> like, sewing's been around forever, yeah, <laughs> and if you try to gatekeep it, like, you're gonna get called out real fast, because we all know, like, <laughs> it's free information, <laughs> like, right, yeah, you get so it for free one way or another, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. But yeah, just having different ideas of like how people approach different things. I'm like, oh, I never thought to do it that way. And then maybe I'll try it and maybe it doesn't work for me. So then I go back to the way I was doing it or, yeah, you know, it's just nice to know that like, oh, I can approach that differently if I have, if something happens or, you know, I don't know. I don't have any specific examples, but I'm just. But, and there's like so many different ways to do certain things too, like binding or whatever and people have their preferences but it doesn't mean that's the only way to do it and there's it's like whatever works for you and try a few different ways if you don't like it try a different tutorial or a different um technique and you might you know you'll find a, a way that works for you yeah and yeah. not all tutorials are built the same so you might watch one tutorial and be the most confused you've ever been in your whole life <laughs> then search the same thing and find a different tutorial and it's like clear as day and you're like oh why right. was that so hard you know it's like right yeah uh an example of that is I did um um flange binding mm, yeah on a quilt last year and I was like I had seen it but I was like what is this magic what is happening here yeah. and I read some tutorials online and I was like oh this is this is complicated there's too much math I don't know if I'm going to do this. And then I found a tutorial that was like, yeah, no, you're just adding an extra, whatever. I can't remember yeah. what the measurement was. And you just sew it in. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. That was so easy. And it looks really cool. And <laughs> why did I, why was I stressed about this? You know? So yeah. Yeah. It's, just keep looking. Yeah. 
And, and that's, you know, maybe I think that's the awesome thing about having so much out there too. And like being able to access so much through YouTube, through Instagram, through Facebook, yeah. like that you are going to see different perspectives on how to do the same exact thing. But just like it, in school, everybody takes up information differently. We all do it. It doesn't stop when you're done with school. <laughs> like we all right. still have different learning styles and different right. ways that we uptake information. And so the fact that there can be so much out there and there is access to so many different ways and different explanations of, of things that, you know, it's accessible to everybody. And so, yeah. Yeah. And just being open to trying new things too, because like, I know there's certain things that when I first started writing patterns, I was like, like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, okay, well, this makes sense. I'm just going to do it this way. But then also realizing like, maybe that's not the best way to do that and <laughs> rewriting some of my older stuff just like to make sure that it is clear and makes sense yeah. and using techniques that maybe are a little easier and yeah yeah just always learning and improving and mm -hmm. but also knowing when to like let it go and be like no it's fine yeah. <laughs> right? it's like you can't always yeah you can't always rewrite everything yeah if it works it works you know it works yeah not broke <laughs> yeah and, and it is unfortunate too, when people think like maybe their pattern makes sense to them as a person, but maybe they didn't have it tested or they didn't really like, or maybe, you know, people that love them saw it first and were like, it's great. And right. then they put it out in the world and it's like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm kind of in that boat following a pattern that I'm like, I don't know why this is out in production. Like I, it oh, is no. so, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like everything's coming together. It's just like, not really in a cohesive order. So for oh. my brain, and so I'm like, well, maybe this works for somebody, but is is hard for me. So I finally like figured it out and streamlined it. And so it's fine, but it just, it, yeah, I really appreciate a well-written pattern because I know how hard it is. Like having yeah. written a lot of my own curriculum as a teacher, like making sure you're writing clear, concise directions and, right. and making sure that it makes sense and that it flows and that it's going to help people think through the process and not confuse them and and having tested patterns like it's yeah it, it is a big process and it's it's not to be done lightly <laughs> yeah yeah well so. when i was first starting out i remembered making a pattern that i was about to email the designer and say you've got like some major mistakes in here mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I kind of kept working through it. I was like, oh no, it's just me. <laughs> like you're like I, <laughs> I was convinced that the math was all wrong because I can't remember what the deal was, but I was like, this is not working out. I don't have enough pieces. Yeah. I, I, you know, I've cut out all my fabric. And then I realized, oh no, like just the way the instructions worked, like it didn't make sense for my brain. Yeah. But the more I kind of realized or read ahead or whatever I was like oh no it does work out it's just yeah my brain didn't work that way like it was just you yeah. know anyway yeah. so when I'm writing patterns I try to make sure that I'm explaining why I'm doing something yeah so that if somebody is like what why would you do this why would you mark this or why would you oh mm -hmm. it's so that when you're doing this other step that that's going to make sense you know I try to like, I don't want anyone to be like, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, and I think that's where, like, if you can think through all those things and, and catch that, and you know that about how you want to write your patterns, like, I think that's amazing. And I think also that idea of having pattern testers, like, cause then you're running it by so many different people and their yeah. different styles of seeing things. And, you know, oh, yeah. you'll catch something that I'm like, oh, I never thought about that, but that's a great idea. Like that would make it really awesome. And yeah, yeah. Just well, because everyone, yeah, will work through it a different way. And it's important mm -hmm. to have that input of someone who's maybe a beginner um, might be like, I didn't understand what you're saying here. Right. Or someone who's more advanced might be like, well, there's, you know, another way that you could say this or you yeah. might try this other thing and, you know, take it or leave it. But at mm -hmm. least you've got that input of yeah. what you wouldn't have necessarily thought of yeah because it makes sense in your head and right. you've made it a few times and you know what you're doing but 
yeah for somebody who's so crazy up here so <laughs> it might not be like everybody's cup of tea and how they want to read it so <laughs> right yeah so that it's an important step to make sure you run it past yeah. other other way other brains that might think in a different way mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's yeah and because you know I do make a lot of quilts it's the difference between a well-written pattern and a not well-written pattern is night and day it's like oh a, a choppy not not well thought through pattern takes me so much longer to get through because I'm trying to figure out like why did I just do this like where did this piece come from like why am I why do I have all this stack of little pieces I cut where do they even come into play and find out oh it's on the back page and it's like oh right you're supposed to also make this block and you're like what <laughs> right yeah what <laughs> why didn't that, why wasn't that up in the front like you know yeah. like why didn't why wasn't this process streamlined because yeah. you know the way it's explained it's like you have to do this thing individually you have to make every block separate when it's like well actually if you just did this like then you would have all these these pieces made for the blocks and then the blocks can come together more you know it's just because yeah. And I think as a season, as you become more seasoned as a quilter, you see those things and you can, you can kind of make patterns work for yourself. It's just nicer when it's already done for you. Yeah. So you don't have to do that. <laughs> all the steps are thought through and all the math is done. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do all of that part of it, which like, I don't mind doing that part, but it's not my favorite part. And I think a lot of people don't want to do that part mm -hmm. or you go to the fabric store and you end up buying way too much fabric because you think, well, I don't want to run out. I don't know how much I'm going to need. And then you're just sitting on this pile of extra fabric at the end that you're like, oh, why did I buy five yards of that? Yeah. <laughs> Hence the reason we have like 14 Rubbermaid tubs full of fabric. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I'll, I'll use it someday. <laughs> right. But then yeah. some new fabric collection comes out and you're like, what Shiny. boxes of fabric <laughs> yeah it's like oh squirrel <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's and it's funny too because like you know we'll have a quilt job and my mom and I are talking through it and trying to plan out okay like we need to get this fabric we need to do this and she's like we've got to have something for that so then we just like start digging through all the bins and we're like oh my gosh remember this fabric and we get totally sidetracked <laughs> like yeah we don't have ADHD of course we do what? <laughs> um <laughs> So just those moments of it's, but it's kind of fun just to like sit, sit and dig through all of our fabrics together and just be like, oh my gosh, look how cute this is. Oh, I forgot we had this. And, you know, it might sidetrack us, but anyway, like, you know, most of the time we do, we're like, oh, we can just use this. And so it is nice having that back stock of yeah. <laughs> random yeah. fabrics that were like, I don't need this, but it's only $4 a yard. So I'm going to buy it anyway. <laughs> and then we end yeah. up using it. So yeah I've, I've started to be a little more selective um when i buy yardage because yeah um now i have a better sense like i might use this as a backing so i know like chances are four and a half yards is gonna be good yeah. like i don't need any more than that i'm right. probably not gonna use it for anything else yeah so i have some stash of just that it's just like future backings <laughs> yeah. That's but, <clears throat> but I'd like and of course I've got, you know, some smaller cuts of like, I just needed it fabric, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I'll probably never use it, but I loved it. Yeah. But um, sometimes those come in handy for something, you know, plus you cut yeah. something that you might not use it the rest of it, but you just want that little bit or whatever. Yeah. And I yeah. love buying fat quarters. I have lots of fat quarters because they're cheap yeah. and they're, you can like build a quilt out of them. Like a lot of my patterns are fat quarter friendly just because that works for me. Like yeah. um, with, with what I've got. And um, I think it's, yeah, it's just fun to like put different collections together and yeah. find uh, colors that work together and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I try not to have too much, but I also have like my baby fabric as well. Like that's a kind of a different yeah. ball game over there is like, I keep all my, <laughs> the baby clothing fabric because yeah. like it's generally not the same there's some overlap but generally it's a different and that that's all like bolts of fabric so that's like completely different yeah like yeah different, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> oh man 
that's, oh. yeah, it's, I think like I've always loved fabric because my mom has always sewn and like always, you know, she would make, you know, she would make stuff for me all growing up outfits and blankets and different things. And, you know, she made some of my formal dresses for school dances. And so it's always been around and I've always been around fabric and, and, but, you know, it was still kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I know it's a thing. And, but yeah, like once my friends started quilting before I did, I was like, wait, that's cute fabric. Like my <laughs> mom was, you know, buying cute fabric at the shop or the shops and making different stuff out of it, not necessarily quilts. Cause she didn't, she started quilting just a little bit before I did. So she wasn't really a quilter before either. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. She just did other sewing, but, um, but yeah, as I started to notice that the fabrics were getting cuter and cuter and one of the first, you know, fabric designers I saw that I just fell in love with the fabric was Amy Butler and oh yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> the giant florals and the color palette. I was like, what is this? I yeah. love it so much. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it's, it is so hard to just not buy everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's yeah. Just, trying to like know what you're going to use and, and it like, there's nothing wrong with buying fabric that you just love it. Yeah. Like with anything, like having a collection of fabric, mm -hmm. is like having a collection of anything you just right. buy because you love it and you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but also knowing like, <clears throat> if you are going to use it, like, how are you going to use it? And mm -hmm. <clears throat> trying to think ahead a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard sometimes, but also like, okay, I've been, I've been better lately. Like, I don't need this. I love it. And I want to look at it forever, but I also don't need it. So I'm not going to buy it. And it's difficult, but also I think too, like it's been forced, like I've been forcing myself to be like, I don't need to buy that. Cause I have, I have these other fabrics or I have these other things I need to work on these projects. And like I said, I was, I have, you know, some tulip pink fabric I'm using and but I had like, I recently unearthed some that I had stashed away and I forgot about it. And so oh. I was like, oh, yeah, this little area, this little closet in my house. And I was like, I found it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I had a layer cake and a jelly roll of Pinkerville. And I had a layer cake of Zuma. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to pump the brakes on buying fabric because I need to use what I have first and yeah you no know, yeah. we always say that as quilters but like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I'm I'm definitely in that boat of like pulling back a little bit trying to work with what I have and then maybe someday I'll buy new fabric but <laughs> yeah well uh our um uh a fabric store like a local fabric store here is moving it's like a massive it's not just a quilter shop but it's like everything fabric okay and it's huge and they're moving and oh. um so they're having a big sale right now yeah because <laughs> they don't want to move at all I'm like <laughs> I don't need to go but I I want to go because this might be like a really good sale <laughs> You're like, oh. and, yeah and of course like also when they move they're going to put everything out in a new you know new place and so it's going to be all different like organized a little differently and you're probably going to see things that I didn't notice before I'm like ah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be an expensive it's going to be expensive for me for them yeah. to move <laughs> you're like please don't do this to me yeah <laughs> but also okay <laughs> but also yeah I'm good with it <laughs> yeah oh man that's so funny <laughs> yeah I we have a couple pretty good quilt shops here but yeah, when they rearrange stuff, I'm like, where did this come from? They're like, oh, it was just in the back, but we moved. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> they're always like changing the quilts that are on their walls. And then I'm like, where did that come from? They're like, oh, we just made it and put it up. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just, <laughs> it's dangerous, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah. When they have those sales they are like, we just got a new shipment. So we're trying to clearance out everything. I'm like, we have, I have to go. I can't not go. Yeah. And then every time I go, I'm like, what am I buying this fabric for? I don't yeah. know. It's, it's definitely an internal struggle constantly, but. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think we're all in the same boat as quilters. It's a, yeah. it's a nasty uh, habit that 
we yeah. can't turn anything down. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you know, honestly, there could be worse things to collect. Like I'd rather collect fabric because I know I can turn into something than just be like, I collect rocks. Like, okay, right. rocks are cool, <laughs> but like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. In the apocalypse, I could make you a blanket. I could make you clothes. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be the most stylish apocalypse survivors ever. <laughs> right? Like, oh God. The things that happen in my brain sometimes. <laughs> oh, well, it has been so nice to chat with you. I have really, yeah, I've really enjoyed this conversation and I know you were like a tad nervous, but no, we're yeah, no, this is great. Like when you first uh, emailed me, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I'm, I, I'm too shy to do something like that. But then I was like listening to your podcast and I was like, I just want to jump into this conversation right now. Like, this is so much fun. I just, I love watching, like, I, I like binged a whole bunch of your videos and I was like, I want to be there to just like chat. So I'm glad Aww. that <laughs> yeah thank you that makes me so happy because that's all I want I like I just want people to want to be part of this and that makes yeah. me so happy so I'm glad you could be part of it because now you are part of the conversation <laughs> that's great well thank you so much I really appreciate it it's yeah thank fun. you and I'm looking forward to your breeze block pattern and seeing more with it because it's gorgeous and I can't wait to make my clock <laughs> <laughs> yes yes please do and make sure you tag me I want to see it <laughs> I definitely will it'll be a super fun thing and I can't wait. So I'll definitely awesome. let you know. But <laughs> so um our for our listeners, they can find you on Instagram at uh, hold my secret. Yeah. Okay. And my website is hollyclarkdesign.com. Okay. And so Great. I have my my shop on there and a blog and I share I've got a few pattern free, sorry, a few free patterns and some tutorials and then just with a lot of the quilts that I make, I write a blog post on how I made it or why I made it and okay. that kind of thing. So. Awesome. So we will <laughs> link all that in the description of the show so people can get to it easily and thank check you. out all your stuff if they haven't already because it's so amazing. <laughs> and, oh, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, perfect. All right. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's hard to hold it. <laughs> I know. That's hilarious. Okay, I'm ready. I mean, say some of those like uh, tongue twister funny things. Like unique New York. <laughs> unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> Let me take myself off. <laughs> <laughs>